Hello, kids. Um, we come to our final one, number nine. We've been through love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and today, self-control. And today's fruit, strawberries. You may be able to make that link quite easy. But our verse today from Corinthians is 1 Corinthians 9.29. And it says this, that all athletes are self-controlled in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. I don't know about you, maybe you've trained for something before, but I play football and I do a lot of training and there's pre-season training and that's when they make you run and run and run and they make you do press-ups and sit-ups and all sorts of things. And you do all this training and you've got to choose to do it because it's really tough. Do all this training so that you are then fit enough to be able to compete and to win. Well, the Holy Spirit in us is this, produces the fruit of self-control. And that means that we have the ability to control ourselves, which may seem very obvious, but actually it's a lot more tricky than that. When I say the word self-control, you might think of maybe a bar of chocolate. You know, when you open a bar of chocolate, oh, it's hard to control myself. I have one bite, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oh, the whole bar's gone. You may uh, open a packet of cookies and be like, oh, I can't just stay with two. I've got to have three. Oh, four, suddenly they're all gone. And... It's not only with food, but things like maybe computer games or texting on your phone or doing something like that. We find loads of things in our world where we kind of can easily lose control with what we're doing with it. The thing is, uh, either you control it or it controls you. Let me give you a demonstration. One day, uh, you decide you're going to eat a strawberry. So you take a strawberry. Mmm, yummy. Mmm, mmm, that's really nice. A lovely strawberry, I know. And, um, and you think, oh, that was lovely. So the next day, you go and you go, I'm going to have two strawberries. So you have two strawberries. I'm not going to do that. The next day, three strawberries, four strawberries, five strawberries. And every day, you're eating more and more strawberries. And then uh, after uh, about two weeks, you're eating 14 strawberries a day. And you're thinking, this is getting a bit too much. But I want to mix it up. So you then get some chocolate in. You melt some chocolate and you dip. Oh, chocolate dipped strawberries. So you start eating all these chocolate dipped strawberries and you're starting to become obsessed. You love these strawberries so much. So more than the strawberries that you're going to eat, you start to think about your strawberries each day. You're like, oh, I can't wait to have my bowl of strawberries when I get home. I'll tell you what I need. A t-shirt with a strawberry on it because I'm like becoming really strawberry obsessed. And then after a while, you're like, oh, I want a strawberry pencil case, uh, strawberry shoes, whatever it is that you want. You become totally obsessed. You start dreaming about strawberries. Every day when you wake up, you think about strawberries. Every night before you go to bed, you think about strawberries. And you, this is a bit ridiculous. But you can imagine how that strawberry starts to control the person rather than the person controlling the strawberries. And it can be a bit like this in life with all these different things, whether it comes to using our phones, whether it comes to using computer games, or with food, or with socializing. We can just be chasing always after these things, trying to fulfill something in us. But as God said in this, we have to be self-controlled. You either control it, or it will control you. And so when the Holy Spirit lives in our life, it means that we have the power to say no. We have the power to say, actually, I know that that thing's not good for me in that quantity. I know that thing is not meant to dominate my life and become everything to me. And so I have the ability now to be self-controlled. And so maybe for you, this is a good moment to just pause. And after this, find a space to just sit quietly, close your eyes, and to think about what it is in your life that you need self-control for. Because we all get tempted we all do face the struggle of self-control. But remember, as that verse said, we're in a race to win a prize. And that prize is Jesus, it's eternal life with him. And so we are to do everything we possibly can. And we ask God's Holy Spirit to help us with that self-control. You can't do it on your own. God wants us to do it. And he's made it so that we do it with the power of his Holy Spirit. So as you're sitting there and you thought of those things that maybe have a bit of control over you, you can take a moment to just pray that God would help you to take control of them and to have self-control in his Holy Spirit. 
Well, we come to the end of our series now, and um, we hope that you've learnt a lot about the different fruits of the Spirit. I hope you've managed to eat some of the actual fruits that we've shown you. I'm sure it's been appetizing looking at them. Um, but I'm going to finish by just reading our verse one more time. So Galatians 5, verse 22 says, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. <laughs>